Hi, this is Winifred, and this is actually a photograph of my gallery in Washington State. Today we're going to talk about digital watercolor. And there is no doubt in my mind that it was seeing brushes that would create something like this, even as I worked. This fueled my interest in knowing more about watercolor. Because I'm really not a watercolor person. I like thick paints. I like oils. But I decided that I really wanted to understand more about this because I do love the software and the creativity, the creative tools that it gives me to express any vision that I have and the more capacity I have in any and all aspects of using the program, the more I can bring into the expression of, of my artwork. So I took a class. This class was taught by Skip Allen, very talented. You know, I'm just so envious of the people who can, you know, sit at a screen like this and just go ch 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 and just whip out, you know, like amazing. That's just not the way I do anything. So I will not even sit and be envious. I will just, you know, do my thing and you get to do your thing and don't look at what anybody else does. Don't don't let that put you off. So um, anyway, there are three different kinds of watercolor. There are real watercolors, and you see that little word right there, real watercolors. There are watercolors, you see that? And this is, this is real color, watercolors, and this is the control panel for real watercolors. We're not in a real watercolor now, we're in a watercolor, hence this is grayed out. We are in watercolor, hence this is all active. And so I had my wetness at 63, because you can alter these things. So no brush is static. And these are the things you learn, like all of these things mean something. Wetness, pickup, dry rate, evaporation threshold, do 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 wind angle, wind force. You get to determine how this brush functions. So um, that's, you just saw a quick example of watercolor. I'm going to show you a quick example of real. So with this brush, and it will act differently, and I'm not exactly sure what it's going to do, but we will see together. Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay. This brush does this, but it's wet, you know, so the moment I let go, watch what happens. Isn't that lovely? I love what these brushes do. I love that. I love that it does things. That's so amazing. So that's what that brush does. I have hundreds, I think, of these brushes. I have to spend time just sit, sitting here going through brush collections. Some are within Painter. Some are custom make, made. There are people who are obsessed about making brushes. You see, it's still active, so, oh no, it's not. When the brush icon comes back on, that means it has done its little thing. Otherwise, this is my watercolor palette, a special palette for watercolor that has things like lift the layer to a watercolor layer. Have you ever had the experience where you're sitting down and you're painting and all of a sudden some strange layer that says watercolor like that pops up? I've gone through that for years. Um, I knew I couldn't work on it, and I knew it was saying only watercolor brushes work on watercolor layers. It was like, where did that come from? So now I know all about it. And if I do that by accident, which probably won't be the case now because I understand it, of course, I would just hit delete, go back to my canvas layer, which works for all of your brushes other than watercolor. But the wonderful thing about watercolor brushes is that you don't have to paint watercolor to use them. 
now I have this other world of tools and its own look and effects that I can incorporate into many of the things that I do because I can, as I touch the brush here, the watercolor layer pops up, I can do something that is watercolor-like on any kind of image and then all I have to do is drop the layer, don't drop, it's back to a basic old canvas mode and I can keep doing anything else I want to do. So for me, because I haven't really bought into watercolor, it's really not my thing. There are some people trying to tell me that, how can you not love it, but it's not. Um, for me, you know, I I do that other kind of painting. I want the oils. I want the impasto. I want that. But I but I have this huge set of new tools that do all kind of remarkable things, and I'm I'm really happy about that. So another amazing brush set that I'm going to very wet O9, and it's going to take a little bit of time probably. Well, I won't do too much. So uh, like a lot of things, these um, paint brushes can work in relation to the papers. So if I turn that up, it means that it's going to be increasingly sensitive to the paper, increases the texture that you see. In oils and many of the other brushes, you have to go down, you go to 6 or 7% to increase the texture that you see. Why is this non-intuitive situation in existence? I have no idea, but that is the case. So, I'm going to now make a paint stroke with, oh, an interesting paper that should help it to drip. And I'm even going to turn down the weight See, these are the things you will get to know. The settling rate, I hope I'm not, I think, yeah, I'll take those there. And then this is the force with which it's going to move down. It gets to have a wind force. You get to set the angle at which it goes. So here we go. And the amount of paint, can you believe? The amount of paint you put on. <laughs> makes a difference. Oh, you thought it was just digital. No, it thinks it's real. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? And at this rate, it's going to run off the page and it's going to take time. And it's a kind of brush that really doesn't want you messing with it. I could go in and hit dry watercolor and there's some great potential with the real, it's particularly, this is the real watercolor, not the watercolor. And there's another one that I haven't spoken of yet. So the watercolor, as we watch this, you know, run off the page, that's because I put on so much paint. Think, think about that. The watercolor and the real watercolor always pop up this extra layer that is evident by virtue of the little blue on the top. The, there's another watercolor. See, as long as I see that and not the actual brush um, icon, that means the CPU is still working and don't mess with it. I could do dry watercolor, but these brushes don't really want you to do that. It would be, oh, see, it says, okay, I'm done. Good. Um, the digital watercolor, which is the third kind of watercolor, and it doesn't have the amount of animation or flow or, or even capacity of the others, but it does have a watercolor look, and, and for those who don't want some of the capacity that these work in, these always work in a gel layer, they're always clear, they're always transparent, they're a little more delicate in terms of the system operation, which is why I said I didn't want to do that, which means it will crash it, and crashing just means closing the program. So I am diligent about 
save when I'm working in, in watercolors well when I'm working in everything in painter I, I save seriously if you don't you're you're gonna be in trouble so that's um, real watercolor and there's so many brush types and styles and textures it's just amazing so I'm showing you this but I'll also show you because even though you know I'm no expert in watercolor by any means I don't teach it by any means I have learned so much and I've actually even come to create some images that I will proudly show you that I really that I like I created also some images <laughs> That I won't show. <laughs> that I won't show you. And when does that not happen with beginners? So yeah, I took the beginning class. That's probably as far as I'll go to. One is a little cafe, really very cute. I really like it. Another one was a big plaza, and I put in too much detail, and I really don't like it nearly as much. It's like okay, it's a nice memory, but it's not the quality of it is lacking. It's not a it's not a really good watercolor, but it's okay. And um, the lily, I think, is is lo a lovely image. The grove of trees, pretty nice image. A lot technically had to be, you would not even believe, I have not even started to talk about what went into creating an image like that. But it's a nice image, and as my instructor says, it looks wet. It's good. Okay, so we did that. And then my landscape, my my purple skies, and my purple water, and my rocks. It's it's nice. It feels like a watercolor. It feels like what we know many watercolors to be. So this is my beginning um, experience, and I wanted to share it with you, not as an expert, but as a fellow traveler. Thank you, and and goodbye and pursue hopefully whatever your dreams are and I hope you are very passionate about the work that you do and I hope you're enjoying your every paint stroke. Thank you. Bye-bye.